All right, welcome on board for another project. This time, I designed this switching power supply. Here is the AC input terminal. This one is the output terminal. It delivers 12 volts at the maximum current rate of 7 amps. The PCB is a single layer board. I designed the schematic and PCB using Altium Designer. Also, shared the PCB and schematic with my friends using the Altium 365 cloud space to receive their edits and feedbacks on this design. I explained the board just briefly. Let me zoom in on the board. All right, now it is much easier to explain the board. The input terminal for the mains AC input, fuse, MOV or value store, the common mode choke for noise reduction. These two are X2 rated capacitors also for noise reduction. The bridge rectifier, the mains capacitor for repel reduction. This is the startup resistor for the switching chip that provides the initial startup current and after the startup process, the auxiliary winding of the transformer provides a supply to the switching chip. These three components belong to the snubber circuit and this optocoupler provides a galvanic isolation for the switching chip to sense the output voltage and regulate the output voltage. These components belong to the output filtering stage, Schottky diode and the LC filter. You can precisely adjust the output voltage on 12 volts using this potentiometer because we make this transformer by hand and it will have some errors. It is not like the transformer that are built using machines. So I put this uh, potentiometer to compensate this error. These galvanic isolation are to follow the IPC standards, I mean high voltage IPC standards, and pretty much that's it. Um, let's go to the next step and the schematic and PCB. All right, this is the homepage of Altium Designer because as I told you, I designed the schematic and PCB for this project using Altium Designer. However, you can also download the latest version of the Altium and activate your free legal license. Just follow this link in my YouTube video description and fill out a form that allows you to enable your free legal license. Anyway, let's go to the schematic. This is the input stage for the power supply, terminal, fuse, MOV or very store. And I have put these two X2 rated capacitor at the input and output of this common mode choke to maximize the noise reduction of the mains AC input. This is the bridge rectifier and this C4 is the mains capacitor for repel reduction. Let's see this DC line net comes down here to the transformer and these two components belong to the snubber circuit and this R4 provides the initial startup current for the switching controller IC1 I mean and after the startup process this auxiliary winding of the transformer pin 5 and pin 6 provides a supply to the controller. So this D2 diode is a rectifier diode however I use a Schottky type for the for its lower forward voltage. Then this R5 and C10 reduce the voltage ripple. This D4 is a Zener diode to protect the controller from uh, over voltage. The controller IC1 is KA1M0565. Let's check the specifications of this component on Octopart. So from the search results, this one is right. So is a so is a, a product from Ansemi. It says 65 kilohertz AC/DC controller and regulator. Let's see the distributors and sort the distributors for the quantity of one and the lowest price. So we can find this component in this distributor for 50 cents and 
these three are out of stock and in this distributor the stock is around 21k and the price is around one dollar you will check this later on yourself however if you press this button you can add this component to your bill of materials and build a bill of materials uh, using this website for free check this later on yourself let's come back to the schematic this is the optocoupler that provides a galvanic isolation for the controller to sense the output voltage from these two nets uh, actually from these two nets and then the any variation or in any changes in the output voltage change the, changes the output voltage of the optocoupler and the opto, optocoupler is connected to the feedback pin of the controller so using this method controller knows any changes in the output voltage and then it can regulate the output voltage by changing the duty cycle of the PWM pulse this LED indicates the existence of the output voltage and some ways it shows that power supply works correctly this R3 provides a dummy load for the output I think it draws around 20 or 25 milliamps of current the rest is, is just a rectifier and uh, and one LC filter or I can say a pi filter so it's CLC this is a Schottky diode and you should use a 2 pin Schottky diode this MBR 2000 is a 20 amps 100 volts Schottky diode uh, this diode has two variations, three pins and two pins. I use the two pins, no difference, just the package type. I think I covered everything in the schematic. Let's go to the PCB. So Bob's your uncle. As it is clear, this is a single layer PCB board. Let me show you the board size. Horizontal size is around 13 centimeters and the vertical size is around five centimeters i have implemented four isolation gaps or creepage areas on this pcb this one this one this one and this one these areas are to follow the ipc standards i and i believe this isolation gap is the most important one because i have placed this isolation gap in the area where the controller switches the premier winding of the transformer for the output, I have implemented copper planes instead of tracks because this area carry high amount of current and plane, a PCB plane, has a lower resistance. It is much better uh, to carry high amount of current. Also for the ground plane, I have implemented this polygon. This technique reduces the length of the ground pass, reduces the impedance of the ground pass, reduces the output noise and enhances the performance of the circuit. I think I covered all of the points. If you have any questions, you can ask in the YouTube comments. All right, to test this power supply, I will perform two tests. First, I will check the output noise of the power supply under the maximum load, which is seven amps. And the second, I will test the output voltage drop also under the maximum load. However, for noise testing, I should mention this experiment is just rough estimation because the transformer and the inductor of the power supply radiates a lot of EMI noises in the air. So that's why you see this type of power supplies in the metal enclosure in commercial devices. And also you should never uh, turn on or I can say uh, draw that too much current from the power supply without any heatsink. You should mount a heatsink on the controller. I just make a short test here. So let me put the DC load on 7 amps like this and turn on the output. Connect the power supply to the power and put the probe on the output. So this is the output noise under maximum load with the condition and I told you I should turn off the device. So for the second test, turn off the load. Do you see the screen and see the 
power supply with no load, the output of the power supply, see, so it's around 12.018 volts. 12 volts exactly. So let me enable the output. Output load, maximum 7 amp, 7 amps, and this is uh, around 40 millivolts. This is just 40 millivolts, voltage drop under the maximum load. So that's it, I should turn off the device. I hope you like this video, don't forget to share and subscribe, give me a big thumbs up, see you in the next video.